been in my work. It is currently on the front of a new edition. Um, it's called Art with Archaeology, and Helen and Joanna have edited this volume. So it's in Archeo Press, so there's a reason to go and have a little look at my piece of things. And um, it's got a very, very bright painting. That's what I normally do, is painting, but I'm also doing a PhD in archaeology at the University of Wales Trinity St. David. There's a lot of us here today and tomorrow for the rest of the conference. Um, this piece is part of my experimental work, and it's really quite part kind of positioning what, what I do in general. Um, it's experimental, it's looking at the notion of plastic underfoot, and it came about from some interactions with an AHRC project called Power and Water. And I was involved with them doing some artworks, and we went for little walks. And what we found was as we were walking along the riverbanks, I don't know if any of you found this, that you suddenly come across these moments of plastic, and you suddenly get a squeak underfoot. And it was that notion of going out and walking the landscape, and perhaps you've read Ingold Under the Ghosts, and what we've been walking and things like that, and perhaps that's more of a sort of almost like a romantic but notion of walking. So you're going more walking, and then suddenly you're coming across this, this creation underneath your foot, your feet. And the plastic is obviously coming embedded in the land. And some of this is to do with just dropping litter. Some of it's to do with the river as a transporter. And also just the seasonal rise of the water in terms of the floodplain. So I have a mound that's been brought together. When I first made this piece of work, it was called Becoming Earth. And it was a roughly the size of the yellow tape. I actually used real grass, organic grass. And I made a sculpture and I embedded all this plastic underneath. And what I did for the Beyond Perception 2015 conference, I invited participants to walk across the grass to kind of get that haptic engagement with the landscape. However, the physicality of that piece was just so demanding. Lugging all this stuff from Wales to Scotland was actually quite a challenge. And this has sort of now been reinvented into something that's quite sizable, something I can take out of schools. And maybe even into HE context as well, which I'll come back to. So, in this piece, Plastic Earth, we have two rivers. We have the River Wye in Wales, and some plastic that's been collected along that river. And we have um, the River Avon, so some plastic collected at the scene of the And the idea is to sort of showcase the idea, um, how these two rivers come together and feed into the same estuary, the southern estuary, and then that, all, that all that plastic goes out to sea. And so it's quite simple. You start off with the mound, but then you also have quite a nice revealing process where you can start to look at some of the plastic that we found in the litter walks. It's things like fruit shoots, thing, <laughs> random things. I think things that actually float along the way. Um, it, it's a nice tool, a nice thinking tool. It creates quite a visual sort of engagement. I really love doing the, the grass, to be perfectly honest. People really responded to suddenly bringing in an actual piece of organic turf into a workshop scenario. People sort of responded well to that. And I think it really ties in nicely with what I think a lot of the academics and the people who are engaging with the public in this uh, panel are what we're doing, is that we're creating kind of thinking tools, but also access points. Sometimes difficult ideas, sometimes to spotlight heritage, um, and these are kind of multi-sensory, sometimes collaborative learning strategies, I think in terms of Lego, um, multi-sensory experiential <coughs> learning types of um, um, learning strategies and taking them out into HE context. I don't know how you found, perhaps in your own universities, how acceptable this is as a method of learning. We know that students are very varied and certain students respond to different types of learning strategies. Now things like drawing in HE context can really help with complex ideas, trying to think through, think through the pen, thinking through these deep theoretical ideas. And so I, I've also played with Lego, but on a, actually with bricks. Lego inspired me, but I've made these bricks and I take them into these spaces and I get students to organise these bricks as they choose. It's like a co it's participatory art, essentially. So these are the kind of things that I'm experimenting with at the moment. And I've just got a little, little bit of writing that I was going to just read out to you. Um, and it's in reference to walking along the floodplain. So with every step walked on the land, the plastic bottles became increased, increasingly enmeshed in the fabric of the floodplain. Crunched flat, they squeaked and crackled underfoot, 
This embodied experience of trampling across small mounds of plastic is perhaps the most striking of all. With every seasonal rise in the river and every agent who dropped their water bottle, mounds like molehills appear across the floodplain. England reminds us today's deposit becomes tomorrow's substrate buried underneath later sediment, like a compost heap, heap or ant's nest. The mound, we could say, is becoming earth. England's aim is to problematize the division between the earth and the mound. The mound does not rest on the earth, it is the earth, a part of the earth. Alarmingly, the plastic layer of strata forming in the floodplain is equally emerging and becoming earth. So just a little idea of that. Thank you.